Hi, I'm Jeffrey from Sephora Pro, um, and I'm here to talk to you a little bit about the differences between bronzing and contouring. Obviously, bronzing is something near and dear to me because I am like white as a ghost, and um, I really need a little bit of color to kind of boost me up. Now, I cannot tell you how many times I have clients come in asking me whether or not they need a bronzer or a contour product, and if they buy either or, do they need the other? And it can be a pretty confusing topic. So. Um, um, we're going to start off by talking a little bit about the differences between the two, um, why you would need one or not the other. Um, and then, because I don't want to be on camera much longer without any color, um, I'm going to do a quick self-application to kind of show you. And then last, last but not least, we'll talk a little bit about product. And um, I can give you some product recommendations. We can talk about different formulas um, and different finishes and stuff like that. So um, without further ado, let's get started. So. First things first, let's talk about the differences between bronzers and contour products. Now, I know that when you're looking, at, especially at Sephora, we have tons of options and it can be a bit overwhelming. So I think a general rule of thumb is that bronzers typically have a little bit of shimmer or are good for kind of giving a sparkle or a light to the face. And nine times out of 10, a contour product is going to be matte. Now, the reason why is because we're using a bronzing product on top of the bone structure. And what that's doing is catching the light. If you were to use something matte, it would give you a really natural kind of easy finish. Whereas contour products, we're actually working under the bone structure and that is creating the illusion of a shadow. Now, when you look at a shadow on the ground, does a shadow on the ground have a whole bunch of glitter and shimmer and stuff in it? No, not really, they're generally matte. So that's why we use matte products or contouring products underneath the bone structure to kind of lift or sculpt the face, give you the illusion of a little bit more of a higher cheekbone, you know, like take a couple pounds off if you need to. I know I do. So um, now let me show you the difference. So when we look at, I think a really great example are the Tarte Park Avenue Princess Bronzers. So with Tarte, you have two products. First is gonna be the matte waterproof bronzer. Now, because this is matte, you could totally use this as a contour product. Then you have Park Avenue Princess, the original, which is shimmer. If you notice, it has a little bit of a sheen. I would never use this as a contour product because when you apply shimmer underneath the bone, again, we're trying to create a shadow. And if you put shimmer in the hollow of the cheekbone, A, you're pulling the cheekbone back out again, and B, it just looks really unnatural because like I said before, shadows don't have shimmer. So I think that that's kind of your basic general rule of thumb. Now. Again, like I said, there's nothing to say that you can't use a matte bronzer. So for me, who's a guy, I really don't necessarily want a lot of shimmer on the face. Um, sometimes it's good because it'll kind of give me a little bit of a glow if I'm feeling lackluster or kind of like not, not radiant that day, especially because I live in Chicago and the winter is like seriously 11 months long and when when summer hits it's like go time so i have to kind of fake the funk sometimes because i don't get a lot of sun um so i typically use a matte bronzer just to give me a little bit of kind of like that that glow again like the sun kind of, I, I got a little tan i went to ibiza for a week or something i don't know so um, let me start by showing you basically the difference between applying on top of the cheekbone versus applying under the cheekbone so I typically like to use a smaller brush, um, especially when I'm doing kind of like a, a contoured effect. I think it's easier to work under the cheekbone if you're using something smaller. Now this is the number 79 Pro Contour Brush. Um, so I would, I would definitely use that to kind of hug the cheekbone and contour. Whereas if I was doing a bronzing look, I would, typically use something a little bit bigger. So this one's the number 59, um, and this is the Precision Powder Brush. I like this one because it's got a nice point to it, so I can kind of, you know, really find where the cheekbone is. But I like using a bigger, fluffier brushes for bronzers because that way I'm getting a softer application and I can kind of build it up. Um, I have seen some crazy bronzing looks where it's like, chocolate bar strikes on the cheek, and that's really not what we're going for here. I want something subtle, especially because, you know, I'm a man, I don't want like a lot of makeup necessarily. Sometimes I get into it, but not today. 
Um, so let's start with um, a little bit of bronzer. I want to use the Tarte Park Avenue Princess, and again, I'm going to use the matte one. Now, I like this one, especially when I'm on set, because this one is waterproof. So I can be on camera for hours and hours and not have to worry about touching up, which is really nice. Um, again, I'm using the number 59 Pro Precision Brush, and I'm just going to softly tap that product into the brush. Notice that I'm not really digging or swirling in there. I'm just getting it on the, the tips of the bristles because I'm looking for a really soft application. Now, again, when we're bronzing, we're working on top of the cheekbone. So it's a good idea for you when you're practicing to kind of feel where your cheekbones are. I know some people like to make the fishy face a lot or that that if that helps you that's nice but when you're applying make sure that you're not applying that way because you're not going to walk around talking to people like that all day like hey what's up so i've got the number 59 brush i'm just going to softly tilt my head back and apply to the top of my cheekbone now i'm working in gradual strokes so that i'm slowly building the color and i don't get too much all at one time Again, just tapping in the product really lightly, getting just um, a little bit of the bronzer on the tips of the bristles, and you can kind of work in a downward motion on the cheekbone. Now, this is by design. I'm working downwards because as I'm brushing over my cheekbone, all of the product is getting trapped on top. I oftentimes use the, when I'm working with clients, I use the analogy of like um, sweeping in the kitchen. If you're sweeping in the kitchen and there's a bump in the floor, all of the dust, unfortunately, gets trapped on one side. And so you have to, you know, figure out how to get it over there. But the same thing is happening on the face. So if I'm brushing downward, as I'm starting here, I'm getting the most product application. And as it's wrapping around my cheek, I have less bronzer. So it's doing a blend for me. It's taking a lot of the work out. And especially since I'm using this big fluffy brush, like I don't have to worry about getting too much product. It's gonna look super smooth and really natural. So um, same thing. Um, I always like to take a little bit on the temple too, because again, when we're bronzing, we're giving the illusion of sun on the skin. And when the sun is shining down on you, it's gonna hit the high planes of the face first. So let's start here along my hairline. Just kind of softly brushing down and you can see that it's also giving me color continuity and kind of wrapping around the face. So it looks again, like really natural. And just soft strokes. And you can kind of hold the brush pretty far back on the handle because again, the further you pull back on the handle, the softer the application, good to remember. And then last but not least, I always take like one big round stroke just to kind of soften and break up the color. Now, on the other side, I'm gonna show you a contouring technique. So you can kind of see the difference between the two. So again, notice that all of the color is on the top of the bone structure here. Now I'm gonna move to the other side and we're gonna work on pulling that up. Another big difference, I think, between um, bronzers and contour products is that contour products can sometimes be a little bit more gray or cooler. Um, they, they tend to, because again, shadows, when you look at a shadow, it doesn't have a lot of warmth to it. Whereas if we're doing like kind of like a sun-kissed glow, usually you get a little bit of rosiness. You could be kind of sunburn a little bit, kind of borderline. And so that's what that bronzer is gonna do for you. So if you notice, this one kind of has almost like a, a warmth to it. So now let's move on to the contour side and I'll show you kind of how to hug the bone structure with your brush. But the I'm gonna be using the Kat Von D Shade and Light Palette. So as to what I was talking about before, this product, if you notice, a lot of the bronzer shades in here, are the darker shades, the contour colors, they tend to have a little bit of a gray tone, especially this one here. So when I apply it on the skin, it's gonna look like a true shadow. Um, and again, when I'm working with a contour product, I typically like a brush that's a little bit smaller. So this is the number 79 Pro Contour. And again, I'm just gonna touch that into that bronzer. I might mix a little bit, because that's a little dark for me. This one seems to be more appropriate. Um, and I've got just a little, again, a little bit on the brush. And when I'm working with a contour, I like to start 
all the way back in the hairline, okay? Because again, we want this to look like it's a part of the bone structure, whereas here, it's just gonna be kind of kissing the skin. Here, it's really about sculpting and kind of carving out the skin. So let's start here, right almost by the, the little trachis of my ear here. And I'm gonna pull that down and then up into the cheekbone. So just like what we were talking about with the bronzer, if you pull up, then the product gets trapped under the bone. So you can see I've got a lot of light here and the face almost looks lifted, whereas here it looks really sun-kissed and golden. So this is becoming a part or a color of my skin and this is really paying attention and focusing on lifting the bone structure. So that's kind of like the general rule of thumb, I think, with application. So that I think that that kind of sews up the difference between the two. Um, and now we can talk a little bit about product. Now, as I mentioned before, a general rule of thumb is that bronzers have a little bit of shimmer or glow to them. So um, just to give you a couple examples, I use Park Avenue Princess on myself. This one's pretty neutral. Um, it's also a mineral-based powder, so it's really great for my skin. I, I can be kind of sensitive. And so using a mineral-based powder tends to work better for me. Um, and it's it's kind of a lighter finish, So and it's got a nice soft radiance. There's not a huge or a ton of sparkle in it. There, The sparkle is really small and fine, so it looks really natural on the skin. Um, next is a cult classic. Everybody loves this bronzer. I think it's still our number one selling in Sephora, but it's the NARS Laguna bronzer. If you've never tried it, it's definitely worth picking it up for sure. Um, this one again is relatively neutral and I found that it works on a lot of skin tones. Um, and it does have a little bit of a glow to it. Now, the cool thing about this bronzer is it's endless. Like, this is huge. You're gonna have this product for forever. And then um, it comes in a lot of different forms. So Laguna Bronzer not only comes in a powder, but it also comes in a stick form. So if you travel a lot or you're really finger friendly when you're doing your makeup, sticks are great, love them. Um, and it's like a souffle texture, so it dries down really nice. So in the summertime when it's super hot outside and humid, like it's not gonna go anywhere, which is nice. So that's kind of those micro shimmer particles. Those two bronzers are really soft focus, really easy to use, quick to blend. Um, and then we start working into bronzers that have a little bit bigger of a shimmer, shimmer to them. So like you can kind of see the sparkle a little bit more. Um, this one from Hourglass comes in two shades. These ones are the ambient lighting bronzers. These are great because you're getting two tones. One is a little bit warmer and a little deeper, and that one's radiant bronze light is a little darker, so it's good for kind of medium tan to kind of mocha skin tones. Um, and then we have this one, which is luminous bronze light. This one's a little bit more pinky, and it's got a little bit more of like a, a whiter kind of iridescent shade, so this is good for kind of fair to medium skin tones, which is nice. Now, I like bronzers with a little bit more shimmer to them if I'm gonna do a lot of photography because typically it tends to diffuse light a little bit easier. They're easier to blend and they'll kind of um, diffuse texture in the skin when it photographs. Now, in real life, you can see the shimmer particles, but just remember that some instances, it's not about what you look like in real life, okay? It's about how you look like in the picture. The picture lasts forever. You get to talk to somebody for like five minutes. What's more important? You, you choose. But anyway, I digress. Um, so then we can start working more into the matte bronzers. Now, matte bronzers are cool because I think if you do want to buy one product for bronzing and for contouring, matte bronzers are the way to go because because it is matte, again, you can use it in the hollow of the cheek and not give you that fake sparkle effect. This one here is a really great matte option. Um, this is the one that I used on myself. I love the Tarte Park Avenue Princess Matte Bronzer because, um, again, like I mentioned, it's waterproof. So I can put it on and not worry about it coming off. Um, especially, you know, like I have a lot of music festivals coming up and stuff like that, and I'm gonna be out in the sun all day, and I don't necessarily want my bronzer to break down, you know? And so this one is not going anywhere. Um, and I feel 
feel like because it's like a medium tone, like it works for a lot of skin tones. I would say I wouldn't necessarily go super deep with this one because it might read a little gray. So just be careful to look for richness in the in the bronzer if you tend to be deeper skin, meaning like it's got a lot of red or a lot of warmth to it, um, kind of like that, or golden tones. Those are great for medium to deeper skin tones. Um, another cult classic and one that a lot of people love is from Benefit. It's called Hula Bronzer. Like, shout it out in the comments if you love this because I know a ton of people do. Um, this one's really cool because A, it's really soft. You can see like it blends really easy and it's kind of goof proof. Like it's hard to mess up this one. Um, it's got the right balance of warmth. So I do find that this works on pretty much every skin tone. It's really universal. Um, another little tip I love with this one is it makes a really great socket color. Like if you're going to do like a smoky eye or something and you need to soften the edge, like this is great to do that with. Um, and then people love it because it comes with a brush. So you get like a... You get like a little flat chisel brush, which is nice. So like if you're working on top of the cheekbone, again, you can kind of brush downward and pull the product down. Or if you're if you're gonna contour with it, you can really sculpt because it's flat and you can create that nice defined line or again, pull it up if you need to. It's like a little mini fan brush, really nice. And not to mention it feels really good. It's super soft. And last, but certainly not least, I, this I just can't, I cannot live without this product, partially because I just, I don't know, I, it's amazing. But I have the Too Faced Chocolate Soleil Bronzer. Like, this is heaven in a compact. And the reason why is because literally it's made of 80% cocoa powder. Yes, cocoa powder. This is chocolate, chocolate Soleil. It's so like when you smell it, it literally smells like candy. Um, I love that it's, A, it's matte. Um, and again, it's really long wearing too. I find that matte bronzers tend to be a little bit longer wearing than shimmer ones because the shimmer kind of starts to break down some or, you know, it starts looking like sweaty. So just be careful with that too. Um, but this one is gorgeous. And I, um, I kind of have a secret love affair with this one because I will be putting it on. I'm going to put some on right now. Um, but I'll be putting it on and literally like I can taste it. Like as I'm fluffing my brush. That's another reason why I use big brushes for that because like I can taste the chocolate. It's so great. I mean, thank you Too Faced for like feeding my addiction. Now it's like after I put on my bronzer, I have to go get a shake or something. <laughs> I'm going to gain like 50 pounds just from bronzing. But anyway, it's amazing. Love this product. Super easy to use. Um, the compact is really easy. And then, I don't know, um, most of the compacts come with a mirror too, which is really nice. Like when I'm applying on the go, especially like if I'm in a car or something headed somewhere, like I need something to see what I'm doing with and that's really beneficial. Um, so that's pretty much it for the different bronzer options that we have as far as powder are concerned. Like I really enjoy powder for me because um, again, I can get oily throughout the day, so it's nice to have something that balances out the texture. Um, we do have a lot of different other formulas too. So we talked a little bit about sticks, like the NARS Laguna is a really great stick bronzer if you're kind of on the go and you need something to just draw with, and then you can blend with your fingers really nice. Um, and then a newer category, well, not necessarily newer, but a category that's getting a lot of um, steam under it again is the liquid bronzer category. Now, those are really cool because you can use that for kind of like an all over glow. Um, it just gives like a soft tint to the skin. So it literally looks like you were tanned a little bit. Um, there's a new one from Benefit actually in the same Hula family and it's called Do the Hula. And it gives you just like a nice radiant finish finish with your bronzing effect. So it looks really skin-like. Um, another really cool thing about liquid bronzers and a pro tip is that you can mix them into your foundation. So during the summer, as you get darker, you're going on your vacations or whatever, you're getting more tan, you can take a couple pumps of the liquid bronzer into your foundation, and that's a good way to transition from, you know, your spring color to your summer color. Um, you just get a little bit more life on your foundation with that, which is really nice. So I think that looks pretty good. I finally feel like I have a little bit of color and like I don't look all one shade. Um, I feel like I just got back from Miami with my nice suntan 
glow. Um, but that's pretty much it. So if you have any other questions about the differences between bronzing and contouring, be sure to shout out below in the comments and we'll try to get back to you as soon as we can. Um, also too, like if you find this video informative, definitely subscribe to our channel. We have lots of other videos to choose from, including an entire range of contouring tutorials. So be sure to check that out too. Um, and then I uh, can't wait to hear any other ideas that you may have. Be sure to comment below as well. So we'll see you soon. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.